Hi. Uh, it's almost the 4th of July, so happy holidays. Um, we'll talk, we have to talk about that soon, too, because I'm going to Ohio for a week, so usually I'm very connected to my computer, but uh, my parents are kind of old school, and I don't think they have wireless, so I, I might be in a little bit of trouble or going to Panera a lot, so, but well, I'll probably send you an email about that. Um, section 4.4 is on uh, expectations of a random variable. That, that, so uh, expectation or um, the expected value of a random variable is the mean of the random variable. What, what value do you expect that random variable to take on, on average, on the long haul? So, um, you know, I, I think example one I put in there just because it's a, it's a nice, well, it's kind of a fallacy that people think, uh, when you say mean, that's how many should happen, you know, every time unit. But mean is really an average over the long run. So again, on an average, you can have, well, variation. And so again, it's an average in the in the big picture. Um, we also call it expected value. So expected value or mean, and the symbol we use is mu or e of x. Um, I try an example two. What I'm trying to do is show you how the definition for expected value comes about. Um, if you had uh, 15,000 students, like this example here, um, and you were trying to find the mean number of courses they take, maybe 150 of them take one course, 450 take two courses, 900, 1950 take three courses. So if you wanted to find an average, you would just add up 150 ones. 452s and then you know just add up how many of each of these you have and divide by 15,000 but if you look at that that's really just um, the probability that one occurs times one the probability that two occurs times two so you're really just doing a weighted average and um, it's not always the case that every value is equally likely so this is out of 15,000 in every possibility every one and every so again it, I think the idea is important here that you really have a probability times the like the prob seven times the probability seven even occurs so it's just a weighted average so if you see that's really that's what I put in the solutions here that's all we're really doing is we're taking the value one times the probability one occurs two times the probability of two occurs so that's the general formula here you see it's just the sum of x times p of x over the acceptable x values. And so the notation is expected value of x or you'll see mu of x. So interchangeably, I think sometimes I say mu, sometimes I say expected value, but they both mean the same thing, just different notation. Here's a quick example I made up. I can't say it's true. We are just finding the, uh, here's the probability mass function for incomes of graduating um, Rose Holman students with CS degrees and here's expected amount and again I made that up so so I don't know that that's true so there's one example what's the expected value of a fair die if you threw it a thousand times one day and averaged all the values you get the average would be 3.5 so it's just 1 times P of 1 2 times P of 2 3 times P of 3 okay uh, this is just a fun example about uh, Cracker Jacks. So you guys miss not being in class because we had Cracker Jacks this day and we got toy surprises and that was the big fun of the day. So um, just a fun problem about uh, expected value of winning a prize when they had a special promotion going on. But pretty much we figured out the toy surprise is still worth nothing. Um, this is a nice paradox. This is just another, it's a game with expected value. Um, it's interesting to read through the paradoxes that um, the expected winnings from this game are infinite, but I doubt when any of you read about the game that you were willing to play, pay an infinite amount of money to play this game. I mean, it's saying in, in actuality, on average, it's worth an infinite amount of money, but you're not going to pay an infinite amount of money to play this game. So that's where the paradox of this comes in and uh, I don't know if you want to look I've, I've done a paper or so on it this I, I like problems like this It's called the St. Petersburg paradox if you want to read more about that or you want an interesting topic sometime to talk about um, I just talk about a few properties uh, if 
a random variable is constant, it can only take on one value, then its expected value is that value. And so here's an example of that. And I think the most important thing, in fact, we are using this. This is going to be our last day in the regular class tomorrow. This we use probably more than anything in class. It's called the, I don't know if our book calls this, but everywhere I've ever gone or talked to, we call it the law of the unconscious statistician. And um, really what it's saying, instead of looking at the expected value of x, it looks at, at the expected value of a function of x where a function of x could be sine x or cosine x or x squared or square root of x or ln of x. And basically what it says, if you take the expected value of a function of x, all you really need to know to find that expected value of that is the probability mass function for x times the function g of x. So it's very beautiful. This is one of the nicest theorems in probability. And so I do, yeah, highlight this is big, big deal. You'll be using this throughout the course. I'll be using it to prove other theorems. Um, so here's just a quick example. Um, for some reason, maybe you want, we want y to be uh, the square of a die roll. And if we squared a die roll, here are all the outcomes we could get. And each of them have a probability of 1 6 still. And if I wanted to find uh, the expected value of y, where y is a square of a die roll, we get 91.6. So all I'm doing is multiplying, wow, that really messed it up. I'm multiplying uh, 1 squared times p of 1, 2 squared, you know, times the probability of 2 squared, 3 squared times the probability of 3 squared. So the nice thing wow, that really looks bad. It's just 1 times p of 1. Two. Okay, but, I mean, we could have used, well, actually, sorry, I did cut, so this is expected value of y, sorry about that. All I would multiply, just, this isn't law of unconscious, just y times p of y. So 1 times p of 1, 4 times p of 4, 9 times p of 9. But if I use the law of the unconscious statistician, and you're going to say, wow, this doesn't look any different to me, um, it says I can take x squared times p of x. So expected value of x squared is 1 squared times p of 1, 2 squared times p of 2, you know, 6 squared times p of 6. Very nice. It's just, I don't know, if, can you see the difference between these two methods? Here I'm using the distribution of y, and I had to figure out what y was, but here, nicely, I can just stay in x's, and I never, I never have to convert to y if I don't want to to find expected value. So example 9 is a nice um, expected value of 2 to the x. I'm just going to use the law again. Um, a couple other properties. Expected value of a linear sum is the sum of the uh, expected value. Sorry, sum of ex did I say the sum of the expected values. Yeah, so uh, expected value of a linear combo is a sum of the expected values. So I just show you, okay. Yeah, and constants come out for free in front. Um, I, I think that makes sense. I didn't prove it. Here's another just fun example of an expected value. Two guys shooting at each other. Keep spinning the barrel. So every time there's a 1 6 chance uh, A will shoot B, there's a 1 6 chance when they pass it over. And uh, I'm just asking for the expected number of trigger pulls on average before one of the two hits the other. We'll imagine they're just paint paint bullets or something like that. But uh, So another nice problem, and I, I think what's cool about this is um, you would end up using Calc 2, the idea the we talk about these kind of sums, and uh, you can use it to compute this value down here. Or you could go to Maple in this class, but it is nice that we use some Calc 2 facts. Okay, so um, I'm going to do one, I think, a video now on four five variants. If you know mean, you should know variants. And then uh, maybe just one other tonight.